video, I'm gonna show you how to use the new layup meter and the different type of layups you can do while using this meter. You don't need a high driving layup to use this new layup meter, but I will be using Kyrie Irving that has a 97 driving layup in the game. I'm also gonna be showing y'all the best settings to use while using this layup meter. So make sure y'all drop a like and subscribe, but let's get straight into this setting. I'm in the animation settings. I went to customize HUD. I went to shot meter shot. My layup meter is on. Now you can turn it off. You won't see your layup meter, but you still have to time your layup. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep mine on. And these are the different types of layup meters they got. They got the dial, ring, and the arrow. I'm gonna have the arrow just because I started off with it. This is gonna be very helpful. You can have large layup meter, a medium, or a small. I like it large, pause, no ditty, but because you can just see it better, you can see the green window better, it's easier to time. So I'm gonna put mine on large, and this is very good, especially if you're blind. Also for the placement, I like mine to the side. You can't have it at the head, or you can have it below the feet, but I'm gonna prefer mine to the side. This ain't gonna affect nothing. This is just a personal preference thing. Now we're gonna head to the controller settings and you scroll down the layup timing profile. I got mine on normal. They do got real player percentage, which means you don't have to time your layup. It's based off the real player percentage, based off your percentage of layups that you make in that spot. They do got low risk reward, which means layup timing only has a small impact. They got normal risk reward, which means it's basically like the normal amount, just like any other 2K. And they got high risk reward, which means the layup timing affects your shot income with a higher chance of making tough layups with great timing. But if you miss the timing, most likely you're gonna miss the layup. So you know what I'm saying? It's pros and cons to that. So I'm gonna just have mine at normal. This is a personal preference thing. But like I said, I'm gonna go with normal because this is basically the same as any other 2K. I only recommend using a high risk reward layup timing if you're good at timing your layups. If you're not good at timing your layups, how normal, low, if you're real bad at timing it, or if you're real bad to the point where you don't even wanna time it, just put real player percentage on. Now the first layup that we're gonna be going over is the quick scoop layup. All you have to do is move and hold your R stick to the left or right while driving. This layup is probably my favorite level to do due to the simple fact of it's easy, it's quick, you rarely get blocked. And on top of that, it's consistent. You don't get no slow, crazy layup animation to get blocked out your layup. None of that crazy mess, especially if you know what you're doing. Now to do this layup, like it said in the tutorial, all you have to do is move using your left stick and hold the R stick to the right or left. Now you on the right side and you trying to do this quick scoop layup on the right side of the court and your opponent's on your left side of the hip. When you drive, make sure that you holding the R stick to the right. And what they didn't mention in the tutorial is, you have to let go of the sprint button. I know a lot of people when they drive to the basket, you're holding R2 the sprint button. Make sure you let go of the sprint button before you even like, hold the R stick to the right or left, whatever layup you're trying to do, like scoot layup or whatever side of the court. If you're on the left side and your opponent is on your right heel, make sure that you're holding the R stick to the left so you can lay the ball up on the opposite side of your defender. So it's basically doing the opposite of each side, but make sure, importantly, make sure you let go of R2 when you do this layup. If you don't let go of R2, you're gonna get a regular type of layup and you might get blocked. Now we're about to go over the normal layup, which is probably the most common layup that everybody knows about. All you have to do is press square while driving in close range or if you're more of a stick user all you have to do is move by using the l stick and hold r stick up while driving in close range now me personally i only use this layup when i'm open on a fast break i probably backdoor my man for an easy layup you know what i'm saying just to get an easy bucket but other than that i'm not using this normal layup because if it's a center in the paint and you do this easy normal layup i promise to y'all boys you're, you're going to get swatted. Really, all you have to do is nothing really too special about the normal layup. But I recommend only using the normal layup when you're on a fast break, you're open, nobody's near you. The next thing that we're going over is the runner slash floater. All you have to do is move by using your L stick and hold the R stick down while driving in close range. And remember, when you're driving, let go of the R2 button. Because a lot of people, when they drive, they hold the run button, the sprint button, whatever you want to call it. But make sure you let go of R2 before you even hold down on the R stick. And you're going to get the runner, floater, whatever you want to call it, every single time. Now, me personally, I only use this if it's like a center with like a 99 
now blocking the paint or a center that just swatting everything in the paint and you're really not trying to lay the ball up on them all you have to do is drive and me personally i really stop around the free throw line and i just hold down on it you're gonna get an easy floater every single time especially if they not jumping at you it's like an easy layup it's compared to the scoop layup in my opinion it's real easy to time but so if you get this down centers are really gonna be mad at you i'm not gonna lie because centers want you to drive in they want they want that contact you know what i'm saying so this is a good way to avoid contact to get blocked from a center all that type of good stuff so that's the type that i'll be using right there for the floaters next that we're going to be going over is the reverse layup all you have to do is move by using your l stick and hold the r stick to the right while driving along the right side of the baseline another thing that i like to do is when you're driving make sure you let go of the r2 button so you can get that layup off and if you're on the left side it's basically the opposite all you have to do is move using your left stick hold r to the left side while driving along the left side of the baseline i like to really do this layup when a defender is think i'm about to lay the ball up on the right side but i'm reversing it to the left if i'm on the left side and the opponent trying to block me on the left side of the backboard i'm reversing it to the right so it's really a good layup to use especially because sometimes the rim can protect you from getting blocked so if you're running and somebody is chasing behind you and you do a reverse layup nine times out of ten they're not even going to get a contest on your layup because the rim is right there so a reverse layup is real good to use especially if you know the time to use this layup if you use this layup at the wrong time you will get blocked off the backboard i'm not going to lie now we're going over the euro step layup now this layup is going to be very consistent especially if you lay the ball up on the right side of the lot the left side of the lot or you just like doing floater scoop layups you want to mix it up you don't want to do the same layup every single play especially because your defender is going to start reading you so if you do the layup on the right side a lot sometimes you might want a euro and lay up on the left side and to do the euro all you have to do is move the r stick down left while driving with the right hand or you can double tap square while driving and holding l towards the off hand it's going to be kind of tricky especially when you're not used to doing euro step layups but if you put this in your bag defenders they're gonna be they're gonna get real confused they're gonna get dizzy because they don't know what you're gonna do so i really recommend putting this euro step layup in your bag it's easy once you get the hang of trying to do this euro step layup on the right side it's pretty much the same thing all you have to do is hold the r stick down and make sure you put it to the right side with the ball in your left hand and it's pretty much the opposite with the double tap square while driving and holding the l stick towards the off hand of the ball just to do it on the right side so it's very pretty much the same thing you're gonna be going over the hot step layup all you have to do is hold the sprint button which is r2 and move the r stick down left or right while driving or you can just tap square while driving me personally i like just tapping square like it's so much easier when you just tap square now me personally i like doing this a lot when my defender he might try to be taking a charge in the paint you might hot step right over that right to the side or on top of that they might just be standing there they don't know you're going to really be going up they don't know they're going to get contact done you don't they don't really know what you're going to do you know what i'm saying because because after this video you're going to be very unpredictable but me personally i like using the hot step layup by tapping square the defender probably gonna be in the middle of the defense all you gotta do is tap it you hop to the side and hey that's an easy lay right there now, me personally if i'm hot stepping to the left side i just hold the l stick to the left side while tapping square now if i want to do it to the right side it's basically the same thing i drive and when i tap square i hold my left stick to the right side now, and to do jelly layups just take everything that I taught y'all in this video and all you have to do is either spam square while you do a layup or just move your R stick around and you're going to do a jelly layup out of any layup in the book. It's just that simple. You feel what I'm saying? So whatever layup you want to do, whether it's the scoop layup, hot step layup, whatever layup it is, all you have to do is when you in the motion, make sure you're spamming square or hold your R stick and hold it to a different direction while in mid air. And it's going to switch your layup in midair every single time. Now, the acrobat layups, the jelly layups, are one of the most overpowered things in the game. I'm not going to lie to y'all, boys. I see a lot of layups getting made just by doing acrobat jelly layups. So, if you can master the jelly layups, you're going to become a demon at this game. I'm not going to lie. But shout out to everybody who made it to the end of this tutorial. If this tutorial helped you out in any type of way, shape, or form, don't, don't forget to drop a like for your boy and subscribe to the channel. I'm on the road to 20,000 subscribers, but I'm going to catch you on that video. Peace.